Molly Weasley was a proud mother of seven, eight if you include Harry Potter, who was like a son to her. I immediately liked her characteristics and was spammed out when I found out that no one had ever done a video on Molly Weasley's entire life. So today we will be talking about that. Molly was born into the pureblood Pruitt family on the 30th of October in either 1949 or 1950. She had two brothers named Gideon and Fabian Privet. She attended Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry in the early 60s and was sorted into Gryffindor House. There she met Arthur Weasley and they started dating. One night they went out for a stroll at 4 in the morning and Arthur was caught by Apollyon Pringle, the caretaker at the time. Molly got back to Gryffindor Tower without being seen and was told off by the fat lady. They both graduated from Hogwarts in the late 1960s and got married not soon after. They moved into the borough on the outskirts of Audrey St. Catchpole in Devon. On November 29th in 1970, they had their first son, William, also known as Bill. Arthur worked at the Ministry of Magic in the Department of Misuse of Muggle Artifacts, while Molly was a stay-at-home mom. Arthur and Molly were in the Order of the Phoenix, an organization to bring down Voldemort, because they had decided to raise their family. In 1972, on December 12th, they had their second son, Charles, also known as Charlie. Arthur didn't make that much money, but so far their family was okay financially. Just four years later, in 1976, on August 22nd, her third son, Percival, also known as Percy, was born. So far, they were still doing okay money buys. On the 1st of April, 1978, Fred and George Weasley were born. So far, they had five boys, all with red hair, and Molly desperately wanted a girl. Their sixth child, Ronald, also known as Ron, born on the 1st of March, 1980, was a boy too. Molly still hadn't given up on her dream of getting a girl, and in 1981, on the 11th of August, Ginevra Weasley, also known as Chinny, was born. That year, her oldest son, Bill, attended his first year at Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. During that same year, her brothers Gideon and Fabian, who were members of the Order, were killed by five Death Eaters, one of them Antonin Dolohov, who went to Azkaban for his crime. In 1987, Fred burnt a hole in Ron's tongue by convincing him to eat an acid pop. Molly was outraged. In 1991, Ron was starting his first year at Hogwarts. Bill and Charlie had already graduated. Molly accompanied Percy, Fred, George, Ron, and Chinny to King's Cross Station. They were in a hurry because they were late, and as her children were getting through the barrier to platform nine and three quarters, Harry asked her how to get through. She helped him by telling him how to do it and made Ron go with him. Back then, she didn't know that it was Harry Potter, the boy who defeated the Dark Lord. Ginny pleaded with her because she wanted to go to Hogwarts, but Molly said that she could go next year. She kissed her children goodbye as they boarded the Hogwarts Express and left with Ginny. That year, during Christmas, Ron told her that Harry wasn't expecting any pres presents, so she knit him a sweater with a big H on it. She sent all of her children one. Her children didn't come home as usual, but instead stayed at Hogwarts because she, Arthur, and Tinny were visiting Charlie in Romania, where he studied dragons. The following summer at King's Cross Station, Harry thanked Molly for the presents, to which she replied that it was no trouble. She also tried to make conversation with Uncle Vernon, which ended up going nowhere. One night, in the summer of 1992, Molly was very scared when she found Fred, George and Ron's bed empty and her husband's flying car gone. When they got back with Harry Potter, she made them breakfast and then they had to dig numb the garden. She told Harry that he could go to sleep, but instead he helped Ron, Fred and George with the garden work. That year, the school books were mostly from Gilderoy Lockhart, and his books were quite expensive, so Molly and Arthur worried about the money. They went to Diagon Alley together, where Molly stood in line with other witches who were all waiting for Lockhart to sign their books. She had to buy Chinny's school supplies secondhand because they didn't afford to buy everything new. On the 1st of September that year, she had to bring six children to King's Cross with all their trunks, and they were running late. When they got there, they only had five minutes left until the Hogwarts Express would leave. 
Later that night, she found out that Ron and Harry had flown Arthur's car to school because they had missed a train and Molly was furious. Ronald Weasley! How dare you steal that car! I am absolutely disgusted! Your father's now facing an inquiry at work and it's entirely your fault! If you put another two out of line, we'll bring you straight home! Oh, and Ginny, dear, congratulations on making Gryffindor. Your father and I are so proud. Spring of 1993, Molly and Arthur arrived at Hogwarts as they had gotten a letter from Percy saying that Ginny had been taken down into the Chamber of Secrets. They were both devastated. She was really happy when Harry and Ron brought Ginny back safely and she escorted her to the hospital wing. That summer, Arthur won 700 galleons in the Daily Prophet Grand Prize Galleon draw and the whole family went to Egypt over the summer to visit Bill. Molly refused to let Ginny in the last one of the pyramids Bill was showing them because it was full of mountain skeletons of muggles who had grown extra heads. When they got back, Arthur told her that Sirius had escaped from Azkaban and that he was after Harry. She didn't want Arthur to tell Harry about it. About two days before terms began, the Weasleys went to the Leaky Cauldron in Diagon Alley, where they stayed until the 1st of September. On the 31st of August, they had a big family dinner, with Harry and Hermione also present. In the summer of 1994, Molly found out that the explosions they were all hearing from Fred and George's room were because they were inventing choke shop supplies. She got furious with them and burned all of the order sheets from young witches and wizards who wanted to buy choke stuff. Later that summer, she invited Harry to the Quidditch World Cup and sent him a letter with Muggle Mail. She put a lot of postmarks on the envelope so that she had to squeeze the Dursley's address into the only spot that was postmark 3. When Harry arrived at the borough, they had a family dinner with all the Weasleys, Hermione and Harry. She told Bill that he should cut his ponytail off over and over again. On the morning of the Quidditch World Cup, Molly caught Fred and George trying to sneak ton tongue toughies with them and made them leave all of it behind. She reminded them that she was disappointed in the number of owls they had gotten. While everyone else was at the World Cup, she went to Diagon Alley to buy Fred, George, Harry, Hermione, Ron and Ginny's school supplies. When she read in the newspaper that the dark mark had appeared, she got really worried and was quite relieved when everyone got back safely. She apologized to Fred and George for screaming at them before they left. On September 1st, 1994, Molly, Charlie and Bill went to King's Cross to see their children off. Molly kissed everyone goodbye. Everyone had been implying that something special was happening at Hogwarts all summer. When Harry's name was pulled out of the Goblet of Fire, Molly was again letting him compete in the tournament. She was sad when she read an article by Rita Skeeter saying that Harry still cried about his parents' death when falling asleep. Molly wasn't told what Harry had to do in the first task because she was already very fragile and Charlie didn't want to bother her more. In 1995, Molly read yet another article by Rita Skeeter saying that Hermione was only using Harry and as a result she sent Harry and Ron lots of treats for Easter and Hermione only a small egg. In June that year, Molly and Bill came to Hogwarts to watch the third task in place of Harry's family. Molly and Bill got a tour around the ground by Harry who didn't have any school that day as all the champions were spending time with their family. During lunch, Ron, Ginny, Fred, George, Bill, Harry and Molly ate together at the Gryffindor table and had a blast. When Hermione came to the table, Molly greeted her more stiffly than usual because of Rita Skeeter's article about her. When Harry explained that these rumors were false, however, Molly was considerably nicer to Hermione. When Amos Stiggory accused Harry of not correcting Rita Skeeter in the wrong stuff she wrote, Molly defended him. Molly, along with the other Weasleys and Hermione, went to the hospital wing with Harry when he returned from Little Hangleton with Cedric Diggory's dead body. When the Order of the Phoenix was reactivated, Molly and all the grown-up Weasleys joined instantly. Molly was shocked about Sirius being a part of the Order too until Harry and Ron explained everything and convinced her that he was innocent. 
That summer, Molly was devastated when Percy left the family, having said that he had been struggling against his father's re lousy reputation ever since he joined the ministry. He also said that Arthur had no ambition and that was why he had always been poor. Molly later went to his apartment in London to try and talk to him, but he slammed the door in her face. The new headquarters of the Order of the Phoenix became number 12 Grimmel Place, Sirius Black's childhood home. Molly and Arthur moved their family there in the summer of 1995. When Harry came, everyone, including Molly, kept him in the dark about the Order's goings. Sirius and Lupin told him the general idea of the Order on his first night, which led to an argument between Molly and Sirius. Molly said that he was like a son to her and that she thought she should decide. During summer break, Molly was in charge of cleaning the house, which was not an easy task because nobody had lived in it for years. She was always annoyed with Fred and George for app riding everywhere and disturbing her because they could use magic now. When Harry had to go to the hearing at the Ministry of Magic for using magic outside of school, Molly was one of the people who worried most and was very relieved when he could continue going to school. She did tell Fred, George and Shinny to stop, however, when they were parading around singing He Got Off. When Ron was made a prefect, Molly immediately wanted to buy him a reward, and when Ron asked for a new broom, she worried about its price. She was relieved when he said it didn't need to be a good one. She went to Diagon Alley and bought everyone their school supplies, and Ron his new broom. That night, she asked Mad-Eye Moody if he could check what was in the desk in the drawing room with his magical eye. He said that it was a bogart and offered to get rid of it. Molly declined and said that she would do it after dinner. When the bogart saw her, he turned from one of her dying children into the other. Lupin comforted her, saying that this time they had a better idea what Voldemort was after and that they could protect their, her family and Harry. On September 1st that year, Fred and George had the task of carrying the trunks down the stairs, but they bewitched them, and one accidentally knocked Chinny down two flights of stairs. Molly screamed at them, saying that they could have seriously injured her. Sears wanted to accompany them to King's Cross in his animated form, but Molly thought it was a bad idea because he could be seen. When she got wind that Harry, Ron and Hermione were forming an illegal group, hereby risking to get expelled, she didn't think it was a good idea and told them not to do it. During Christmas break, Dumbledore's Phoenix came to her telling her that Arthur had been injured or on a mission for the Order. She sent a message to their children saying that Arthur was still alive and then that they had to stay put. At 5.10 a.m., she arrived at Grimmel Place and told them Arthur was going to be all right. They made breakfast and she expressed her thanks towards Harry for saving Arthur. That Christmas, Molly was crying because Percy had sent back the jumper she had knit for him. She was crying all morning. When they visited Arthur again, she got furious when she found out that a healer was using stitches for his wound, which was a muggle way she didn't trust. In the summer of 1996, Molly made plans with Dumbledore to bring Harry to the burrow so that he wouldn't have to spend all summer with the Dursleys. When Harry arrived, Molly told him that Arthur had been promoted to head of the department by Rufus Grimger. She made Harry onion soup and said that he had grown since the last time she saw him. When Arthur came home from work, she asked him what his nickname for her was, to which he replied Molly Wobbles. Bill was engaged to Fleur, Molly didn't like that at all, and kept inviting Nymphador Tongs to dinner, hoping that she could break the pair up. When Ron was sent his owls, Molly was pleased, saying that he got more than Fred and George together. They went to Diagon Alley together and visited Fred and George's choke shop. Molly wanted everyone to stay together because she thought it was too dangerous to separate. Hagrid convinced her that Harry, Ron and Hermione would be fine with him, so Molly, Arthur and Chinny set off together. Later, they all met at Weasley's Wizard Wheezy's. <laughs> Inside, she caught Ron making an inappropriate hand gesture towards Fred and threatened to chink his fingers off. During Christmas that year, Molly had her hands full. Whenever someone made a comment about Percy, she shook them off by saying that he had a lot to do at the ministry. When Rufus and Percy came to the burrow because Rufus wanted an excuse to speak to Harry, Molly was overflow with happiness because of Percy coming back. 
He didn't want to talk to her and stormed out after Fred, George, and Chinny flung mashed parnips at his glasses. Molly continued to be upset all the way through Christmas break. On the 1st of March in 1997, her and Arthur were called to the school because Ron had almost died from drinking poisoned wine. She thanked Terry for saving his life. That June, her and Arthur were called to the school again because Bill had been injured in the Battle of the Astronomy Tower. While Arthur was interested in how Dumbledore had died, Molly was focused only on Bill. She thought that Fleur wouldn't love him anymore because his face was scarred, to which Fleur replied, thought that I would not wish to marry him, or perhaps you hoped. What do I care how he looks? I'm good looking for both of us, I think. All these scars show that my husband is brave. Her great aunt Muriel has a very beautiful tiara, goblin maid, which I am sure I could persuade her to lend to you for the wedding. She's very fond of Bill, you know, and it would look lovely with your hair. Molly replied, and from that day forward, Molly was okay with Bill and Fleur getting married. Molly and Arthur attended Dumbledore's funeral not long after that. When Molly found out that Harry, Ron and Hermione were going to drop out of school, she was determined to find out why. In the summer of 1997, during the Battle of the Seven Potters, Molly was worried when some people didn't arrive and was very relieved when Harry and Hagrid came. A few moments later, Lupin and George arrived and Molly was really worried because George's ear had been jinxed off. When Arthur and Fred came back and the twins choked about George's ear, Molly started crying. In the end, everyone came back safely except for Mad-Eye Moody, who had been killed. The next few days, Molly was very stressed out about Bill and Fleur's wedding as she was planning everything. She always made sure to give Harry, Ron and Hermione different chores so that they couldn't talk to each other about their plans for the following year. When Monsieur and Madame Delacour arrived, she and Arthur insisted they sleep in their bedroom while her and Arthur slept in the sitting room. On Harry's birthday, she gave him a watch that had once belonged to her brother Fabian. While she was explaining the tradition, Harry hugged her and she was moved by it. That night, she forced Charlie into a chair by wand and gave him a haircut. Molly made a birthday dinner for Harry and a cake that looked like a golden snitch. The next day at the wedding, Molly was once again sad that Percy didn't show up. During the ceremony, her and Madame Delacour cried out of happiness, and in the evening, she danced with Monsieur Delacour. Kingsley Shacklebolt appeared that night to warn everybody that the Ministry of Magic had fallen, Rufus had been killed, and the Death Eaters were coming. Shortly after, she sent word to Harry, Ron, and Hermione that the family was safe. In March 1998, Ron was seen traveling with Harry, which endangered the whole family. Arthur had to leave his shop and they went into hiding at Auntie Muriel's. On May 2nd, Molly fought in the Battle of Hogwarts and was devastated when Fred died, but before she was happy when Percy had come back to them. When Beltrix hit Shinny with a killing curse, she said this. Not my daughter, you bitch! (laughs) Later, she got 12 grandkids, one of them named after her, and the date of her death is unknown. And that was my whole video on Molly Weasley. I really hope you enjoyed it. This took me really long to make, so I hope it turned out good. And until next time. I hope you enjoyed this video. Like or dislike, just give me some feedback and I will hopefully see you again soon. Don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell so you get notified every time I post a new video. Thanks.